hello everyone um, this is my fourth video on um, software test life cycle okay so till now uh, we discussed uh, testing introduction SDLC model debate life cycle and today we are going to discuss on software test life cycle what are the stages are there and I am going to explain each every stage how it works okay let's start so software test life cycle so uh, being testing team what what is our life cycle like uh, how test life cycle goes on in a uh, in a software company or in a uh, in a during the uh, product testing or software testing right so um, it starts uh, with uh, requirement analysis first right so uh, we all know that uh, for any model or any methodology we approach it starts from the requirement analysis right uh, if you remember STLC model first it start with requirement analysis then uh, so design then uh, development and testing and then implementation and maintenance right so in similar way test life life cycle also it start with requirement analysis from the requirement analysis we start test planning right then from test planning we write test cases right and then we set up our test environment uh, like uh, uh, the what uh, server we need uh, uh, what access required for testers uh, we finalize the uh, uh, D, uh, we finalize the access for example we need to access uh, we need access system access right or uh, we need a mob if uh, the application is mobile based application then uh, we need mobile uh, right different uh, types uh, different version Android iOS uh, uh, Windows mobiles right from lower version to a higher version um, resolution related uh, screen size and all that all these testing uh, required environment we will set up in the test environment setup then once uh, test cases are ready and your environment is ready then uh, what we do we will execute our test cases right so during execution if any defects are there uh, we log the defects and uh, we uh, we continuously monitor our defects we get multiple builds till the issue is resolved all this activity will take place in the test execution status then finally we report uh, what we did right uh, during reporting it will be like our evidence uh, uh, document we will send we will send our uh, test summary report in dust uh, in that test summary report will include how many test cases are executed out of which how many are passed failed blocked not applicable all the details so that you are executed uh, will be sent out to the stakeholders so this is how a software test life cycle works and these are all the status uh, involved in software test life cycle right so let us discuss uh, one by one of these status how it works uh, uh, and things like that okay let's start with recommend uh, analysis or design review right so in the requirement analysis we have three types one is walkthrough second one is inspection third one is peer review right so let's talk about uh, all this one by one walkthrough what is walkthrough generally in the walkthrough say for example there is a requirement there is a, uh, a requirement uh, uh, for uh, login functionality right so generally business analyst team they write the requirement 
and once they have completed their requirement usually they will send this requirement to development team and testing team for the uh, review right or what they do generally instead of sending the uh, requirement they ask development team and test team to participate in the requirement review or requirement analysis state what generally they do they write the requirement and they call dev team and uh, test team and they give the walkthrough on requirement in this case for example uh, there is a login functionality they have uh, requirement uh, they'll explain the dear uh, how the functionality should work what should be there what is the design uh, how it should look and all that they'll start giving the walkthrough on the login functionality so they'll say okay uh, we need to text field in that username is the one field password is the other field we need login button right then uh, they start explaining like this logo should come in the uh, left uh, top side corner and design level also they will tell this is how it should look and all that so from this uh, if development team has any question they will ask right away hey uh, this can be done in this way or this can be done in that way they will discuss and parallelly if they see that okay all the dis uh, valid form point uh, coming up from the development team they will incorporate that changes in the um, walkthroughs uh, walkthrough only and testing team also they say hey you just told that uh, there should be username password and login button uh, it would be great if you can also include the forgot uh, password button right so you you are raising your concern you are giving your feedback you are asking the questions uh, you are asking uh, like uh, after login what should be the next screen should come and all that uh, this is walk through in this uh, in this session uh, uh, both the development team and testing team uh, they are uh, raising their concerns they are asking the questions queries and all these addressed by ba team if they want to change anything from the requirement uh, perspective they'll change it they'll circulate the latest document right so this is what generally walkthrough does inspection this is related to code code inspection they code okay uh, generally testing team may or may not required for this inspection because all technical related uh, things they are going to discuss it would be great if you participate understand the code level concept also that uh, that that is also great thing uh, you you will know the uh, how the code works inside also otherwise also not required where your participation is very much uh, less because technical aspect they need it okay they give the code level inspection they give the okay i have this i have coded like this uh, with this code i minimize this effort i minimize the performance effort and things like that they start giving the um you know uh or start giving the uh demo so peer review generally we uh, this peer review we will include uh, in the testing team uh, uh, for example like i have written some test case generally what i do once i i have completed my test case design i'll send this test case to my peer means other team uh, my team member right so that team, that member will review my test case and he will give his comment all this should be recorded suppose you are using excel you should also have the comment uh, uh, column having the review comments if you are using uh, hp tool uh, things like that other tools you also have to give your review comments so based on the review comments tester who design the test case should update uh, as per the reviewer comment uh if he is not okay with the review comment he can he can or uh, he can cl clarify that why is not okay with that comment and things like that that's why we have the review so that everyone should know what is what is written for this recommend every should know whether uh, we have 
we have covered all the requirement related test cases or not scenario wise we have covered it or not generally testing team will have the checklist review checklist everybody once it's come for review they have to follow the checklist for example in the checklist uh, it will be like uh, no grammatical error no or spell error uh, and third point is like requirement should be covered right requirement should be mapped in uh, test cases agnostic requirement fifth uh, uh, test case uh, steps whether uh, like uh, detailed coverage is uh, given or not for example if any test case required precondition whether it's uh, return over there or not so reviewer will think all this uh, aspect and he will start giving his uh, review comments then that come based on the review comments tester will update the test case right once we are done with the test case updation this is done test case design is rare done test case review is done and also we are sure about all the test cases covered for this particular requirement then as per the test plan we'll start this test environment basically test manager and test lead will take care of this activity uh, getting the right environment having the right access uh, for uh, team members they will take care of it uh, uh, tester do not need to worry on this uh, part uh, basically it's a manager call and the test lead call where they should make sure that uh, it's covered uh, the access are uh, given to the team members right so they will take care of uh, this part and uh, they will so uh, this will be taken care by the uh, lead or manager so generally uh, once all this done we get a uh, mail from the uh, dev team uh, uh, or uh, uh, from release manager saying that build has been deployed to QA server you can start with your execution right once we receive that mail and uh, once task is assigned from the lead or manager to a tester they will start executing the test case right when they start executing the test case as I said before uh, we may get the defect we may get the error or uh, there are issues like a test environment is not accessible or some tester doesn't have the access to uh, test environment all this will be concerned uh, will be raised or uh, uh, addressed in the uh, execution time and the lead uh, or manager job is to make sure that execution goes smoothly right so they will take care of that uh, uh, thing and uh, they uh, start executing the test cases during execution if they see any error defect they will log the defects okay and they'll monitor the defects and get multiple defects and they'll close the defects okay then once they have completed their test case execution uh, for example say for login functionality they have some 10 to 20 test cases you have to execute all of them right so you will uh, say okay I executed all the 20 test cases and which covers the requirement and we are done with our testing right so you say now we are good to close the test cycle right then finally when it comes to reporting part here so when it comes to reporting part generally lead or manager will extract the test summary report for example in login functionality scenario i said i have 20 test cases they extract all 20 test cases they make sure that uh, the all of them are passed and uh, there is no issue or if we, if issue is there they should put it in a non issue so that everyone should know this is what so that everyone should know this is what happened right uh, in the uh, uh, testing right 
so then also they will take the evidence report uh, uh, we can extract all these reports uh, if we are using any uh, defect management tool otherwise what uh, generally if you do not have any management tool uh, you just executed all your test cases using excel then it's uh, 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 then lead or manager should extract all the information from your your side and get the things done and put it in a reporting format and uh, share uh, with the stakeholders right so this is what uh, software test life cycle uh, is all about um, uh, so once again like uh, as I said it starts from the requirements from requirements we start planning from planning we start designing from this des uh, test case design once we are uh, de uh, test case design are ready we will send that to for peer review we get the review comments we will update our test case then we start executing all these test cases in our in our uh, respective environment then during our execution if we uh, if you found any defects we log it uh, in the uh, uh, tool or uh, uh, we communicate that defects to development team and we monitor our defects we get multiple uh, builds we make sure that finally the issues uh, are resolved then a uh, test lead and uh, a manager uh, going to extract the report of your test case they'll uh, send the test summer report and evidence report to the stakeholder so that they can uh, deploy it in a production right or next level environment maybe a pre-prod or a production right so this is what a software test life cycle right but why we need planning right why we need test plan so for any uh, given uh, for we need to have plan right uh, for uh, for anything we need to have plan uh, to make sure that uh, uh, our effort going as per the plan if something goes uh, deviated uh, uh, we should always have plan B right then only we can have good control over our uh, execution so generally we need plan for all the release saying that okay yay uh, this is my approach uh, this is my team uh, this is what i need uh, to execute my test cases in this uh, uh, environment so generally test lead or manager writes the uh, plan test plan to make sure that test effort goes smoothly and to make sure that in between if we get um, unknown uh, errors or unknown uh, what uh, situations how to counter it what is the plan you have if some issues came up or come up in between or in a technical word if I want to say risk right so the previous uh, status holds good if everything goes good right what if something goes wrong in the uh, design phase or in the environment phase or in the execution phase you should have the plan b right to execute and to make sure that uh, your effort goes smoothly so in the test planning itself the leader ma manager test manager will identify all the possible risk for risk what is the contingency plan what is the mitigation plan right he will write it in a you know, document and he'll share that to a stakeholders and he'll get the approval then if we start the execution so let's talk about that test planning right as i said planning is required to make sure that our effort goes smoothly right even if the there are uh, uh, certain situation we may come where you are not able to proceed it then what is your the next call right to make sure that you or uh, uh, your effort goes smooth otherwise like uh, if i want to tell in different way for example say um testing team uh, is given two weeks time frame where they have to complete their execution right so what if some three four days you are not able to access the system right um, maybe uh, like uh, uh, you do not have the 
permission or you do not uh, the uh, environment is not uh, stable or uh, some of your team members are uh, uh, taken leaves so all this risk will definitely affect your smooth execution so you should have it in a plan where if something goes wrong like this hey i have a backup plan like this i have mitigation for this right you should say that and you should convey to your stakeholders or your uh, product owners by giving this plan you will you are agreeing to take the responsibility and you will make sure that your effort testing effort goes smoothly so then let's discuss about test planning right so in the test planning all this content uh, will be in the template any company they have their own planning template but more or less these are all items will be there may be they add something extra or something uh, less from this but more or less all these are required in the test planning template right let's start one by one what it says here right so let's start about test plan id so for any plan id for why we need plan id for example we get multiple releases right for multiple releases for same uh, client we should have the plan id right that makes sense otherwise what happens you cannot refer a release to uh, you are in release two you can't refer release one test plan release two definitely will have release two plan right test plan so we'll but the client is same and the overall functionality that we are testing is same right so that's why we keep the plan id right then instruction in the instruction section you should give uh, a, uh, a description about your project right what the project does right overview of the project all this you will put it in a restriction then when it comes to test items right you will mention name of the, um, the futures functionality that you are going to test in our case it's a login functionality that will be your test items right login functionality will be your test items then you should mention features to be tested what features to be tested in login functionality what you are testing right you will say i am testing login functionality where i am providing valid username and password right that will be your login functionality feature right then you have to identify what needs to be tested you know and the feature to be tested login functionality uh, db functionality whether once you create account it should go to the db and you are able to see the uh, db stored all your necessary details so features wise you should mention here in features to be tested right features not to be tested for example in this release we are just uh, uh, talking about uh, login functionality right features not to be features not to be tested will include uh, like uh, sent items i am not going to test attachment i am not going to test though that uh, those are part of your uh, 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 functionality right uh, uh, for example it's a mail functionality but still in this scope in this release you have only login functionality other functionality is not in scope whatever not in scope you have to put it in your future not to be tested for example uh, attach uh, sending a mail or uh, sent items or uh, adding multiple attachments whatever the functionality that you have in your uh, mail thing all those are upcoming uh, 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 upcoming functionality right that is not in the scope of the current build so you put all those in the future not to be tested right then when it comes to approach right how how you are approaching the system uh, like uh, what is the strategy that you have to approach the system for example uh, like uh, i'm going to do a, a functional testing on this right uh, so you have to mention what type of testing that you are doing for this uh, functionality to test this functionality functional testing usability testing that you are going to do integration testing that you are going to do right so you have to find out all the testing uh, thing and you have to should uh, you should uh, mention 
mentioned in the approach right test environment as i said before only test environment see uh, they will find out the hardware requirement software requirement uh, any external device uh, uh, are there to test so whatever required for testing they will they should have to have the configuration for this in a uh, uh, qa uh, team to get this uh, test environment and access for team members to have uh, to do the testing for uh, for in uh, test environment right so in test environment you are going to put all that okay i need a windows 10 based uh, system uh, and also i need a mobile uh, mobile android ios windows mobile where i can test this login functionality you have to think about the environment perspective hardware software or uh, any service related uh, right things like that you should have it in your test environment okay then when it comes to um, entry criteria so what is your entry criteria right so it's not just that uh, development team say hey uh, uh, the the model is completed you can test it you test you start testing no they can't simply say that right the entry criteria will be they should make sure that at least one round of unit test should be done from the development team side to make sure that all the functionality are working fine that is the one test uh, one unit testing document they have to send along with the build uh, release notes should be there and second entry criteria third entry criteria is um, your test environment is ready or not completely ready or not to test that build right maybe developer uh, will have the complete build uh, complete configurable uh, environment uh, maybe test environment is not ready but if they deliver build to you you are not in the position to test the application right your environment should be ready unit test case uh, testing should be ready and release note should be given to you and build should be given in a proper channel right that all comes in your entry criteria you are setting this boss in the future if test team have to test your build these are all my entry criteria you should make sure that when you are releasing build to test testing team you should have it all this document that is your setting up the criteria right then suspension criteria so you agreed you accepted the build you did one round of smoke test and you started accepting it right during the execution phase you see the environment is not supporting network issue or db issue right uh, and uh, there are some pending defects which is uh, uh, which is causing you uh, not to go further right so then you suspend the build you say boss all these issues are there and I'm not able to execute all my test cases I am suspending it take this result give the fix address these issues and again deploy it in a uh, testing uh, server and give it to me right so this is what uh, suspension criteria you will put right then when it comes to exit criteria you will say uh, okay um, uh, my test scenarios uh, are tested or all my test cases are executed and uh, there are no outstanding defects and you have completed your uh, timeline right all this will come comes under your exit criteria all modules are tested uh, I have met the duration and I have executed all the test cases related to this particular functionality. No major bugs are there, outstanding bugs are there in this build. So I am closing my testing. So you, you set up the exit criteria and you share all this information with the uh, stakeholders. So then also you are agreeing that once I am done with my test case execution, what deliverables i am going to uh, these are all the deliverables i am going to share uh, with stakeholders it uh, it's always test summary report where it will include how many test cases executed out of which passed failed blocked not applicable outstanding defects known uh, defects uh, right you will put it in a summary uh, test summary and you share all the details to your stakeholders right that you agree to give all these uh, related reports to your stakeholders right then 
um you you are also going to identify training needs for your team member for example uh, you have four members team or three members team uh they do not know this particular domain how it works right for example uh, your team members they are from uh, two of them from retail domain one of them from insurance domain but your application is on banking domain okay so in that case all three members your team members are new to this domain you need some training you need uh, some basic uh, concept of uh, bank king how it works what is uh, their functionality in terms of uh, when it comes to bank like we have so many accounts right saving fixed all that uh, so you should identify whether they need training on this uh, because you are you know that two from retailer one from insurance they should need uh, some banking related training so you should identify training needs and you should mention in the training needs section then you also put the schedule uh let's say for example uh, only two weeks uh, time frame given to testing team so how you are going to manage this activity right how you are going to prepare uh, your team to achieve the goal how the team should concentrate and focus on working on uh the effort that should complete within two weeks right so you should have all the schedule uh, uh, plan and you'll put it in a date wise okay from day one i'm going to start right you'll you'll put all your effort in the scheduler section then when it comes to responsibility responsibility responsibilities you will mention what is test manager role what is test lead role what is te uh, senior test engineer role what is uh, associate test engineer role um what is project manager role what is the communication channel uh, you have what is the control you have control access level uh, you will put in a tableau and you will uh, give it in a responsibility section right and the most important part is risk and assumptions right as i said why we need planning planning make sure that uh, it gives a sense of uh, 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 to stakeholders that okay uh, these are all the functionality types of testing covered uh, entry criteria is like this uh, acceptance criteria suspension criteria exit criteria are like this uh, they identified some trainings okay so it gives sense to the stakeholders and it builds uh, some conf confidence to the stakeholders okay planning is good right so in that you also should make sure that what is risk in the uh, during the execution of uh, this plan right so you will put all the risk identified risk uh, say for example uh, uh, knowledge of uh, testing team members on domain as i said before uh, all your test members not knowing the banking domain then what is what what they need uh, that will definitely that that will be the definite risk uh, if uh, you do not educate them by giving some trainings on banking right if they blindly start executing the banking related test cases then that that is a risk that definitely impact on your product right you will mention this in the risk section and the mitigation plan you will say okay i'll provide the banking domain related trainings to my team members and will make sure that all of them are aware of what is exactly bank does right that is your mitigation plan i'm not going to talk about mitigation and contingency plan that is different uh, all together that 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 also that should be there uh, but we'll include in risk and assumption will ca categorize the risk mitigation and contingency right then you'll also identify like a lack of time uh, say for example two weeks is very uh, less for tester to test the application and uh, certify it right so you'll identify okay two weeks is not enough for me to certify this build time wise uh, risk then resource wise risk. for example uh, you are uh, you started execution you have for uh, three members team out of three two start uh, uh, two or uh, two are going to on vacation during the execution phase and you only have one tester and you have only two weeks to complete that's a risk right for that you should also mention the backup plan contingency plan and things like that to make sure that your execution goes smoothly right 
then you also identify that uh, delay in deployment delay in build key onto the testing team will also affect your uh, test deliverables right and uh, things like that what what are all possible risk you have to identify it in before and put it in a document and share that in the uh, uh, to a stakeholders so let them know that these are all the risks involved in the execution phase and you also definitely need uh, you need def uh, approvals from stakeholders project management team uh, and uh, product owner and all that they are going to review this plan if they see they if they see something not okay in these sections they give their uh, feedback uh, to a lead or manager who will prepare this document uh, as per the feedback again they are going to update all these sections and they'll get the approval from the management right then you are uh, execution uh, starts right as per the plan you have to execute and complete it so this is uh, what uh, overview of uh, software test life cycle and uh, various uh, stages involved in it and uh, I hope I explained and covered almost all stages here uh, um, that's it uh, for today's uh, session uh, and I hope uh, 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 this will give you the good sense of uh, software test life cycle and how it works. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Thank you.